The Clippers have so many injuries, you'd swear they play their games at SoFi Stadium. Cristiano Ronaldo, playing for LA Galaxy, LAFC, intriguing. And Lendale White came to USC with big dreams. And what he got was a fat effing bag of cash. Hi, I'm James. This is your daily dose of sports and snark for the greatest sports city of the world, Los Angeles. This is Faithful Angelinos. It is October 26, 2022. I'm in a pretty damn good mood, so I can't wait to get you the news and notes from around LA. But if you do like the content that we put out about LA sports, clickety clack the like button, clickety clack the subscribe button. There's a notifications bell. Hit that. It'll let you know we drop new content. Sharing is caring. Let people know we exist. And yes, comment. I'm not perfect. I totally get it. And besides that, I get tremendously lonely, which is why I created the channel in the first place. So before we go through the news and notes from around LA sports, let's take a look at the scoreboard. Last night, Luke Kennard scored 15 points, but LAC, the Clippers, they were down three players. We'll get to that in a moment. Oklahoma City, 108, Clippers, 94. The Clippers fall to two and two. Meanwhile, it's uh, Crypto.com Arena. The LA Kings snapped a 10-game winless streak against Tampa Bay with a 4-2 victory over the Lightning. LA has not beaten Tampa Bay since Obama was president. Meanwhile, today, the Lakers are going to be at Denver at 7 o'clock. Russell Westbrook is doubtful for tonight's game. Please, God, please, merciful God in heaven above, stop allowing journalists to write about Russell Westbrook. Please, I pray faithfully every night I'm going to go down to the church, light candles, burn some incense. I don't care. Cock blocker the cat. I will sacrifice the cat. Please stop having me talk about Russell Westbrook. It's so pointless. Kawhi Leonard joined Paul George and Marcus Morris by not playing Tuesday night out in Oklahoma City. Say hello to Cock Walker, the cat, by the way. Kawhi actually has a real issue. He reported stiffness in his surgically repaired right knee, and he is flying back to Los Angeles as we speak so that he can go get some treatment. This is different from Paul George. He just had an illness of some sort. Definitely different from Marcus Morris. The man lost his father. Say a prayer for the guy. Leonard is also out for Thursday, but could be out much longer because they don't know the extent of the problem with the surgically repaired knee. The LA Times asked the question, which has been a question that has been circulating on Twitter for weeks now. Could Cristiano Ronaldo come to LA? He has spoken about ending his career in Southern California. And if you watch Premier League soccer, you know he went into prima donna mode with Manchester United. Hardcore. He, would, he refused coming into a game as a substitute when the manager asked him to do it. Even worse, he shoved his own manager. You can't get into physical confrontations with your own boss. We know this as regular working stiffs. Just because you're, a, you're one of the world's elite strikers, no, you can't do that either. It makes you a pariah. But if it comes to the United States, he is a pariah, right? You can't have him just physically assaulting your coworkers or managers. Besides that, he is 38. There's also another problem that either the Galaxy or, the, or LAFC would have to solve. In order to fit him into the roster, he would obviously be a designated player. MLS rules for playing for paying players is very confusing. It's like an unkempt pile of yarn. But the one thing we do know that, they, that either team would have to do is they would have to get rid of a designated player in order to make room for him on the roster. Now, that part is not that hard. You can buy out one designated player per offseason. But he is 38. He does have a history also of being a cancer. Now, Times columnist Kevin Baxter, who went through all of that, suggests that the Galaxy and LAFC, they're not even necessarily the front runner for his services. That would be Inter-Miami. So you might want to keep that in mind. Do you remember Lendale White? 
If you watch all the USC highlights back during their last big run of dominance, Lendale White was in all the highlights watching Reggie Bush score touchdowns. But that's beside the point. He did get a cup of coffee in the NFL, right? He did get a couple of national title rings. And he also got a fat bag of cash with about 150 grand in it. <laughs> he goes on to this podcast, right? And he just let the cat out of the bag. He comes to LA, much like anybody else. Big dreams of making, making himself famous. He goes into his, his new apartment. He looks on the floor, big satchel, just full of dollar bills. And it's kind of like when I moved to LA. You see, Fox News keeps asking why Gavin Newsom is so popular. It's because when you move to LA and you get your apartment, there's a fat bag of cash right in the middle of the floor, right? You think your stimulus check was good? No, no, sir. That has nothing to do with the bonus that you get when you move to Los Angeles and take an apartment. $150,000. Granted, that was a little more than the bag that I got when I moved to LA. But, you know, now that I no longer live in Hollywood, though, it kind of blows my mind when I think about it, right? You think of all these girls. They move to Los Angeles because they want to be an actress. They go to the apartment. There's the fat bag of cash. And they still get into pornography. Why? <laughs> what happened? How bad with money are the women who move to L.A.? You get $150,000 by being a hot chick moving to L.A. And you still wind up in pornography? You still need an OnlyFans? What happened? I mean, just because there wasn't anything to invest in like Bitcoin back in the early 2000s, you don't need to go into the adult film industry. Dad, I've, I'm sorry, I feel ashamed of myself. I, they even gave me 150,000 and then I was in this video. <laughs> it was girl with girl with girl with cow, with boy, with girl, I, I don't know. Here's another bit of Trojan news for you. Linebacker Tuasivi Nomura sustained a compound fracture during a game earlier this year. He kept his mouth shut, which I wouldn't be able to do. <laughs> and he still wound up playing three more plays before one of his teammates before one of his own teammates said, hey, uh, dude, um, is that a bone sticking out of your hand? You don't mind if I just remove my helmet and just vomit violently into it right now, do you? I just, the man had a bone sticking out of his hand for Pete's sake. The Athletic made a list of what is and is not working for the Trojans. I'll tell you what isn't working the run defense, they're averaging about four and a half yards per carry. Now, the reason that I'm bringing that up is that that actually has a direct impact on the rest of the Trojan season. In the sense, it should not be a problem for their next four games. But that fifth game, that fifth game is against UCLA. The Bruins, <laughs> they run the ball. Zach Charbonnet, even Dorian Thompson Robinson. The Bruins are 12th in the country in yards per carry. Something to think about when the rivalry game comes up. Aaron Donald ends his partnership with Kanye West Sports Agency. Duh. The Rams have also waived backup center Jeremiah Cologne. He started two games. He's been one of four people to play center for the Rams this year. But the Rams, they do have some good news. They could waive Jeremiah Cologne because they are confident that Brian Allen is back. By the way, I feel bad. I didn't go through the entire Chargers injury list. I spent so much time talking about J.C. Jackson that I forgot to mention. Oh, and uh, wide receiver uh, Mike Williams. I forgot to mention, edge rusher Chris Rumpf, he's also going to miss a few weeks. He sprained his MCL. 
We'll see uh, if any more Chargers wind up getting injured during the bye week. Fingers crossed. Darvin Ham says he's not considering lineup changes for the Lakers despite an 0-3 start. At least he didn't mention the name of the evil one. Satan's son. Russell Westbrook. Ah! Genuinely exhausted at talking about that guy. Over at UCLA, basketball freshman Amari Bailey, who has yet to play a single college basketball game, was included on a preseason watch list for the Jerry West Shooting Guard of the Year Award. Hasn't played a single game yet. Now, he came to the Bruins as the number one recruit in California. I'm not saying the guy can't play, but he hasn't played a single game, and he's already on watch list for that. Now, to be fair, I mentioned he hasn't played an actual NCAA game, but UCLA did play San Diego State in a scrimmage on Sunday, and apparently he was just killing everybody. So we'll see where that leads. And by the way, he is not the only Bruin on a preseason player of the year watch list. Tiger Campbell was named to the Bob Cousy point guard of the year watch list on Monday. There are going to be more watch lists released as time goes on. Maybe I'll mention them. Maybe I won't. Either way, it doesn't matter. It's time to be with my wife's cat. Now, if you enjoyed this content about L.A. sports, don't forget to like and subscribe to Faithful Angelinos. We do talk L.A. sports here. Thank you for watching. I'm James. We'll be back tomorrow. Faithful Angelinos is a Kian Corta El Queso production. Take care.